Hey there, let's go over more theory of how CPU registers work in Windybug. In my previous video, I showed the meaning of the accumulator and the instruction pointer register. Hopefully that was informative. Let's continue in this video with two more registers, the stack pointer register and the base pointer register. Let me switch over to Windybug which is waiting at a breakpoint. I am using the 32-bit version of Windybug because the memory addresses for the 32-bit version is a bit shorter. The 64-bit version works identically the same way but the memory addresses are longer so it's a bit harder to show on screen so I chose to use the 32-bit version of Windybug. So let's view some registers. So the registers on screen over here is the standard group of registers. Let me just move the screen a bit. You have the EAX, EBX, ECX. The command R is to show the registers. The registers that we are interested in is the EBP register and the ESP register. Since this is a 32-bit application, we can see that the registers have the prefix E, which means 32-bit. If the registers were 64-bit, the prefix will be R, and if there's no prefix, it's 16 bits. The two registers we are interested in, the EBP and the ESP, ESP means stack pointer and the EBP means base pointer. The base pointer and the stack pointer are the basis of the stack frame which is the core component of a function call. The technique of how it works is like this. The EBP register has the value of the base of the stack frame. The ESP register is the register that has the next available memory address of the stack. The confusing part is that the stack runs downwards. This means the EBP register has a higher value than the ESP register. This is correct as the next available memory address is lower in memory address space even though the stack is growing. It's growing downwards. When a function is called, this three lines of assembler is executed. Push EBP is to save the EBP register onto the stack. Move EBP ESP is to save the value of ESP into the EBP register and sub ESP 124H is to subtract 124 from ESP. Basically, this is to create space for local variables. The size 124 does not matter. That's calculated by the compiler during compile time, but sub ESP is to create space. There are other lines in the function prolog, but we can skip those for now. So let's take a look at some disassembly. What we do is we go to view and we select disassembly. We get a view of the disassembly for wherever the breakpoint is at. So let's take a look at where the local variables are being assigned. Let me just put a breakpoint over here and run to the breakpoint. So set source and go. And there we are, we've hit that breakpoint. If we look at the assembler just above the breakpoint, forget about these uh, two assets over here. The assets don't get compiled. So I compiled this program without assets. So these don't appear in the assembler. These two lines which are allocating values into the variables become these two move instructions. We can see that the first move instruction over here is to move the value 7BH, which is the number one to three, into EBP minus 24H. And the second move instruction is to move the location where the string sum string into EBP minus 30H. This is correct. The number over here 24H is selected by the compiler when it arranges the variables. Because the EBP register is actually higher than the ESP register because it, the stack is growing downwards, the compiler will assign EBP minus some address to get to the variable that is located here. Now, this is an important part. If I run DV, I can see the local variables. Like I can see some value over here is the value one to three. I can also see that by running DD EBP minus 24. Because I know that this is at this location, if I do DD, which is dump double word, I will get the same answer, which is seven B. What is 7B? Well, if I run formats 7B, I get the value 
one to three, which is exactly the same as the value being assigned. Similarly, if I want to view the value of some string over here, I can see in assembly, it is EBP minus 30. I can dump that value using the command du EBP minus 30. The POI over here is because this is a pointer. And because this is a pointer, I can dereference the memory with POI. DU just means dump as Unicode. So if I run this command, I will get some string, which is the value that was being assigned to this variable. Now, if we run to the end of the function, let's just do that. Let, let me just put a breakpoint and run to the end. There we are. If I go to the disassembly, I can see that the end of the function is the red command, which is uh, over here. We can see that just before the red, we have the move from ESP back to EBP. We can see that the value of EBP is moved back into ESP and the EBP is popped and returned. This is known as the function prolog. The prolog is not so important for now. So let's just skip over this and show what exactly you can do by having this knowledge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to another instance of Windybug. This instance of Windybug is attached to a release mode application in which the symbols have been stripped. Stripping the symbols means that some information has been removed from the symbols. Often in release mode applications, the symbols will be lacking some detail. This is because stripped symbols are often shipped with applications and the detail has been deleted intentionally by the compiler. An example would be that if I run dv to show local variables, I get this error, unable to enumerate locals. Well, that is correct because the symbols are stripped. However, because we know a bit of assembler, we can deduce where the memory address is located for the local variables. Now in the previous example, if I were to have gone and scrolled up, we know that this instruction over here, the D word EBP minus 24 is actually the local variables. How I know that is because if I compile this as debug mode, I'm able to look at the assembler code and able to cross reference the source code. So I know that this variable is actually the local variable. I will do a video in the future on how to exactly pinpoint this using assembler lines and using compiler listings. But for now, this is exactly where the local variable is. Now, based on this, I know that the string value should be EBP minus 28H. If I run du EBP minus 28, I get these, the value some string, which is correct. This also means I can dump the entire stack by just running DD ESP EBP. This will dump the stack frame. I can see that the value is this value over here, which is exactly the same as this number over here. If I were to view this number here by doing a du, I would get the value some string as well because it is actually the same memory address. If I was to run the command k, I would get to view the stack. The stack is equivalent to running dds ebp. dd is dump double word. By putting an S at the back, we can actually convert the memory addresses to anything that matches in the symbols. If we run this command, we can actually see the stack as well. In this view, I can actually traverse the stack manually by clicking on the address and seeing what gets highlighted. And I can actually follow the value of EBP all the way down the stack. I have a video in this playlist in which I manually traverse a stack because the stack is corrupted. The technique that I'm doing is actually just dumping out the memory and looking at the EBP register locations. I made that video a long time ago, so I might do a follow-up video on how to manually traverse the stack, just in case the stack is corrupted. Anyway, that is quite a lot to take in, but in summary, the EBP register is the base pointer and the ESP register is the address of the next memory location. Knowledge of the EBP and ESP is invaluable because often when debugging release mode, we can't get the proper symbols or the symbols are stripped. In this situation, we can still view the local variables. We just got to go into the assembler find the location of their local variables and just dump the memory addresses. I view this assembly a lot, especially when debugging release mode, because there is quite a lot of detail that is lost if we don't have the correct symbols. And if the code is optimized, it's pretty hard to follow the source code when it jumps around. 
So I often just look at the disassembly to find variables or return values and the knowledge of where the EBP is and the ESP is is invaluable for doing that. The build that I was using did not have optimizations enabled because it's way too difficult to read and optimize build. In the next video, I will make an attempt to use an optimized build and try to explain how I get the local variables from an optimized build. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. Until next time, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.